good for ourselves to know more about our culture, our heritage, our history, and, and be, be, you know, more proud, I guess, as it were. I'm Vanessa Canby, and this is West African Wave, the series where I interview people within West Africa and within the African diaspora. And in this video, I'm going to be talking to Patrick Adom. He was born in Ghana and moved to the UK when he was seven years old. And he has this business called Very Puzzled. And they make puzzles on maps of different countries within Africa and also different countries in the Caribbean. He also has actually just made one of London. And within them, there's prominent people from those countries. And then there's things like the Anansi, um, spider there and jollof and different really interesting facts about the country on the back very puzzled are actually crowdfunding at the moment so that they can add more countries to their puzzles and check that out in the description below they ship worldwide and when you pledge you do get things in return so they have um, posters for the wall t-shirts and puzzles as well so check that out now let's get into the interview and i absolutely love your puzzles Actually, one of my friends bought a puzzle for my son, well, for my kids just as a present. And mm. I was like, this is the best thing ever. How have I never seen this before? Be great to hear a bit about your business and also how you got it started. Yeah, um, absolutely. So th thank you for that. No, the whole idea came about, um, I have a daughter, um, she's eight now, she's in the other room. She, um, I don't know, she didn't want to do the interview in the end, but she might, she might come in a bit later. Um, and just, just kind of interacting with her, like there's a lot of her stuff in the background. It's a bit of a mess. So she's got like, you know, a, a pretend shop and um, a pretend um, kitchen, kitchen and yeah. then there's all kinds of stuff. Um, <laughs> but um, I just thought there wasn't a lot like specific to her culture and her background. So similar to you, um, you know, we're, we're Ghanaian, um, her mum's Ghanaian as well, but um, there wasn't really anything teaching her that specifically. Um, and I know it's, up to parents to do that. You can't really rely on the schools or anybody else, but I didn't feel that there was um, the materials out there. You had to kind of cu curate them for yourself. Um, I had my dad send me some stuff from Ghana, some books and even like um, the crow beads. Um, oh, the, right, the, yeah. the, the and stuff. So we kind of did that and it was fun. Um, and I just stumbled on an idea, I thought, yeah, jigsaw puzzles, why, why not? That could be quite fun. Um, and I think my back of my mind, I thought it can't be that hard. I mean, I've learned the hard way <laughs> that it can. <laughs> but um, it's, um, it's has challenges. But um, yeah, so, so I'm kind of rambling. Yeah, basically my daughter was the impetus and kind of got, got me going. Nice. So for everyone that hasn't seen your jigsaws before, if you can explain what different jigsaws you do and also the posters that you do as well. Yeah, so I could maybe um, show some examples. So we have a Nigeria one. It, it all started with the Africa one and then you've got a Ghana one. So this is the range we have now. Uh, South Africa, uh, Jamaica, which is probably the most popular one. Uh, Kenya. Jamaica is the most popular. Uh, um, Jamaica is the most popular um, oh. and then you've got London which is a newer one London and Kenya are quite new and London started off really as a bit of fun I thought could I put like a grime MC in each borough like where they were born where they come from but then I wanted to expand on that not just to say that all we are as musicians and grime artists so I wanted to add like academics you know lawyers teachers um, architects designers that kind of thing so you know people can have like people to aspire to, then Ethiopia, and then um, th then you have Africa, which is what started it all off. Um, and, and so, yeah, just been expanding on, on the range. Um, we also have uh, T-shirts. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, nice. Which, funny enough, um, Emily Sandy was wearing one recently. I think this week it was quite funny, just randomly happened. I didn't send it to her, give it to her or anything like that. She just oh, she so purchased cool. them somewhere. She, she wore it and I was like, wow, okay. And then we have posters as well of, of the jigsaw. So um, looking to expand, add, add other new products to bring. But um, it's just time money is where I am at the moment. Because people keep asking me, oh, when are you going to do great? Nada, when, uh, why isn't there like a Zimbabwe one? I'm disappointed you don't have this one. <laughs> I'm like, I don't have the yeah. money, guys. Yeah. So. <laughs> and so are you, um, do you do this all by yourself? So is it just your business or do you have employees? 
pretty much all by myself. I wish I had employees. I have a designer who's the creative person that does all the designs, but I basically tell them what, what to do, what, what the design should be, but they do the actual drawing. Um, so I, ha I have that, but otherwise, yeah, it's me. You know, if you, if you make an order, I post it. If a shop needs an order, I deliver it or I post it. And, you know, if you send an email, I, I reply. So, yeah, I'm trying to get people on board to help with some of the other stuff. So, but for now, yeah, just, just me. Wow. So, I mean, it's obviously doing an amazing thing, you know, spreading the message of Africa, Ghana, uh, Nigeria, all these African and Caribbean countries and supplying them to kids so that they can learn about about these different countries or if they have origins in that country they can learn more like for my son obviously he learned more about Ghana by doing the jigsaw and so obviously that's got a really great um you've got great morals behind that what why do you think that you really wanted to do that I know you said about your daughter but you you were born in Ghana weren't you yeah, so I was born in Ghana. Uh, I moved here to the UK um, when I was seven. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I felt like I could have done a number of different things. Um, I thought I had different opportunities. Um, you know, I could have used used my mind to do different things, but none of none of them really resonated with me. None of them really kind of spoke to you know what my battle and what my ethos is. So yeah, I think just making money for money's sake is great, but also there has to be something something else motivating you. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I had done a lot of reading, a lot of research, you know, I was always kind of really um, interested in like, African history and black history, you know. So doing the research for the maps, I found it enjoyable. Plus yeah. there was some things that I already knew. So I had, like, I thought I had a bit of a, or a head start, um, but also doing some of the research, I learned more things. Like, oh, this is really fascinating. Or, you know, wow, why isn't this even more widely known sort of thing? And so ultimately I wanted it to be fun because I have a daughter mm -hmm. and if something's not fun, she doesn't care. It's like, you're not going to get her to do it or it's just going to be tears and tantrums and that's my tears and tantrums. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, let's, let's make it fun. And, it's, and it's, it's, it's two ways. It's not just for African Caribbean children. I think it's for any children, like any yeah. parent that, you know, they can teach their children um, you know, about the world and not, you know, about people that aren't necessarily like them, as it were. But also it's good for ourselves to know more about our culture, our heritage, our history, and, and be, be, you know, more proud, I guess, as it were. Um, so that's, that, that was kind of the, the whole impetus for me. Amazing. And I saw, um, you sent me like a little blurb, and I saw that you want to start trying to manufacture them in Ghana. I, I would, I, I, I did look at that. So I was in Ghana Easter last year and that was one of my thoughts. Um, but um, I just find this, there's a reason why so much is made in China. It's just, it's just, they know how to do it and it's just so much even more economical. I mean, I can't even make them in the UK at the same price that I would pay to get them made and shipped from China. So it's kind of like, I, I would like to do it, but it just feels that, the infrastructure and everything's geared up in China where, cause in Ghana it was like, but I think it was just little things like just the actual cardboard boxes to put the finished products in was, was a nightmare. I think it was only recently, like in, in the last 10 or so years, a company actually started doing that in Ghana. And I was just like, wow, like there's just the hurdles and the was like, I, I, I would love to do it, but I, the capability, I just don't have the capabilities to, to do it at this point. It just needs, a, a lot more which is, isn't, isn't to say it shouldn't be done and it can't be done it's just I think I wanted to just expand my range and if I was to try and manufacture it here or in Ghana it almost feels like I'd have to take a whole year and a bit like 18 months out just to set it up and it's just like I, I, I can't afford it unless someone gives me the money I, just, I couldn't afford to do it. I mean I feel like Ghana um, you know obviously so much is made in China at the moment but I think that Ghana has the potential to also be like one of these sort of world leaders in even like manufacturing because I, I, there I is the manpower so. um, there. I, I believe so. And, and I want that to be the case. I, I want to be in Ghana. It's just felt like 
and, and maybe I'm just not built for it. Maybe, maybe I need to toughen up. It just felt like every, everything can be, un and I don't want to be negative because, you know, I, I love my country dearly, but I just think for what I was trying to do, I think maybe for certain industries, it's more geared up towards that. I think maybe where, you know, I, I feel that there's no sense in making stuff that you can make on the ground in Ghana that, you know, isn't cost effective to ship. But I think this just wasn't one of those things. Um, right, okay. It's just, just things like, getting the right kind of paper, then getting the packaging, you know, the printing, it just, yeah, trying to just gear it up where they've just got, you know, different companies supplying the company to make one thing, if that makes sense. And yeah. we, we need to get to that in Ghana and, and in Africa as a whole, definitely. Um, I, you know, I just didn't have the resources and the capabilities and yeah, no. the, the know-how. I, I kind of, I know my, I have to know my limits and it's just like, this is just, yeah. It, there's other logistics like shipping it from Ghana to the rest of the world and it's like you know mm. the trade routes and having all that in place and so it was just yeah I just I mean ultimately if people were were willing to pay a premium to, to to have that made in Ghana um option then again I, I would do it but I, I'll I'm not sure the end consumer would kind of yeah. stump up like an extra I, I could be wrong I think some people would but I think the vast majority of people yeah I, don't, yeah I guess i guess yeah yeah um, it's good to get the product to as many people as possible at an accord uh, affordable price like what you're doing at the moment and yeah. um, and i i think that it is a really affordable price your jigsaws yeah, um, yeah so 9.99 sorry to cut you off um i know a lot of people have said oh you know you could charge 12 pounds you can even charge 15 pounds and part of me was I don't want to make it a premium and I don't want to make people feel like they're being penalized just for like, you know, supporting their own culture as it was. <laughs> because I'm like, you, you can get like, you know, frozen or Disney themed puzzles on Amazon for like seven pounds, eight pounds. And I'm like, so I think 10 pounds a good price. Any more than that is some, yeah, I just feel like you're penalizing people and it's just like, it doesn't make sense. Um, mm. and, and I think, beyond 10 pounds it's like oh, i've got a break you know to 20 or oh, i've got to get you it's just it's just like a psychological thing it's like just you know um, if it's 10 pounds okay it's a 10 I, I can live with that you know i don't have to think about it but anymore and then yeah people start asking questions and you know what else could i do with that and you know i can get cheeky takeaway you know it's just, <laughs> you start having a different kind of competition and so so um, if anybody wants to support you at the moment, you're actually doing crowdfunding. It's, it's, it's my big push at the moment. It hasn't gone as stellar as I wanted. So I'm thinking maybe we might get to half the amount that we're trying to raise. But um, anything we raise, it's still good because it's not like um, get all of it or get nothing. It's whatever I raise, I can then take that um, and, and use that to make some more puzzles. It's just people have been asking for so many different puzzles and it was like, kind of using the money that I make to self-fund would, would take a number of years. And it's like, can I speed up that process um, and, and get, you know, more contributions? And also when people contribute, they get, depending on what they contribute, they can get any number of uh, um, perks. So, um, and, and it would be at, at a discount rate. So um, it, it makes sense so to actually buy. It's, yeah, I looked on there and actually it's such a good deal. You can pay basically less than a puzzle you know, um, for the different rates and get a puzzle and you're yeah. contributing to the cause. So it's kind exactly. of like a win-win for both sides. Exactly, yeah. So some of them you might get a puzzle and a t-shirt, others a puzzle, t-shirt and a poster, you know, at usually like 40 or more percent than you would at the normal retail price. So um, th th there is that um, added benefit, definitely. Um, and I just wanted people to kind of, because People have been asking for different ones. I'm like, okay, now's your opportunity, right? You, you've asked for it. So if you, if you can help me fund it, then I would do it. So it's kind of, yeah. What, what countries are you thinking of adding? Um, so the ones, I have five designed at the moment. So it's uh, Senegal, Mali, Cameroon, um, one of the whole Car Car Caribbean, and then one of India. So I had been focusing on just African Caribbean countries, but then... India has a billion people. There's, you know, one point or more billion, you know, people from India or Pakistan in the UK. So it was like, well, that's that's a great market to hopefully target. Um, so yeah, so, so that's what I'm looking at. And 
as I said, Jamaica's done really well. I'm looking at a Trinidad and Tobago map as well, but I wanted to do one of the whole Caribbean so people can kind of um, oh yeah, that's nice. So it doesn't matter where you're from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it's also good to kind of put it all in context, all the different um, islands within the, and the, the nations within the Caribbean. Um, so yeah. So. Oh, nice. And can you ship, do you ship all over the world or do you just? I, I do. So um, I do ship interna internationally. Um, so that's fine. So wherever you are, whatever you want to order, um, we can ship. Um, I had an order from Australia. That's probably the furthest one. Or I think the Isle of Shetland was, which is another one. So oh my, yeah, that's near there. me. <laughs> Not that near me, but you know, that's, that's, so that's that good. Quite, yeah, so that was quite fun. Um, but um, I'm hoping to also have more um, stockists and distributors in different countries. So. I signed a deal with uh, a Nigerian distributor, so that's really good. So we can get it um, on the ground in Nigeria, as it were, and make it easier and afford more affordable for people in Nigeria to, to get the maps. Um, and then my dad lives in Ghana, so he's been able to help me um, reach out to, to stockist in Ghana. So that's been working well. So do you have them stocked anywhere in Ghana at the moment? Yeah, so in Ghana, it's stocked at places like uh, EPP, uh, Palace Store, Wild Gecko, um, the Shop Accra and La Coco House. I think those are the ones. Um, and then there's a there's a bookshop called Book Nook. So I think oh, I'm, nice. I'm trying to negotiate with the likes of Game and ShopRite, but it's taking a bit longer. Um, okay, yeah. But, but at I'm least you're in quite a good amount of shops. So anybody watching this that lives in Ghana, you could head to one of those shops and pick up a puzzle and in Nigeria is it already in shops no so the shipment should be there end of August early September I think um it's when we hope to to be available okay in, in. oh cool and where will it be in Nigeria what um I think it'll be in a, a variety of outlets so I have a distributor oh, right, okay. they're basically gonna get it out to to the outlets that oh. they already supply so hopefully that okay. that will do good and then hopefully we can do similar things with other countries like Kenya, um, you know, the US being a big one, also Jamaica and, and so forth. Amazing. But I do have some stockists in uh, the US. So I have a, uh, a shop called um, A Shea by the Bay in Oakland. Um, there's another one called Key Bookstore, um, Noir Boutique. And then there's a lady in Canada, uh, Kids Swag. So there, there, is, there are a few, but ideally I would like to ship directly from China and have a distributor um sell to these okay. shops and it just makes it easier makes it more affordable and e economical for everybody so um and, and speaking of canada the stock is in canada actually had uh was contacted by one of the school boards for one of the other districts and they wanted to order like 200 plus puzzles so i don't know if it's going to go ahead yet but that would be good if it did um, that is that is so good yeah because everybody always thinks oh this will be great in schools but so far um yeah just yeah working on the schools i haven't really worked on them like targeted them as such um yeah. because i think it's quite bureaucratic and it's yeah you know but yeah hopefully something comes comes off it and where can people uh support your crowdfunding i mean i'll put a link in the description but if you let anybody know you know where to go as well yeah, thank you. So it's, it's on Indiegogo. Um, it's a rather long link, but if you go to Indiegogo and just type in puzzle, it's basically the first uh, of the list that comes up, the first option, basically. So Great. yeah, just go to Indiegogo. Yeah. Or if you follow me on Instagram at very, very puzzled, that will basically, um, from there, you should be able to yeah find the Indiegogo campaign. But yeah, please, please support because <laughs> I need all the yeah, help. Yeah, let's, let's get Patrick to his goal because... I honestly believe that it's such an important thing, education, especially at the moment with Black Lives Matter, everyone is talking about um, educating their children and, you know, even people that aren't, you know, black want to educate their children about black culture. And I think this is a great way to do that. So I really, really uh, hope that you get to your goal and manage to add these new maps to your um, collection. Yeah. I mean, definitely one way or, or another, it will get there <laughs> by hook or yeah, by yeah. crook. I really appreciate all the support from yourself and from everybody else. And I think the message as you've iterated, it's not just for, you know, African Caribbean um, parents and children. It's for, you know, all parents and children 
from any you know background um I, I had you know white parents buying and saying you know we wanted to support and make sure our kids are raised in a more tolerant and understanding world so that's that's the whole point because i I can educate my daughter, but then if she goes to school and she's encountering like, you know, systemic racism and stuff, then there's only so much she, she can do, if that makes sense. We need everybody else to kind of also be on the same page and on the same understanding, basically. So, um, and yeah, so, and I, yeah, I think ultimately what I've tried to do is make it fun. I think, I think parents want it to be educational, but, but if it's not fun, it's an uphill struggle. So, um, and, and, What's really great with some, I'm sorry, I'm waffling on again, but a lot of parents now are messaging me and they're saying, oh, you know, we did the Jamaica puzzle and then, you know, my son picked two or three of the people fig, um, shown and they went away and did some research and like written um, a small article. So it's things like that. It's, the puzzle's almost like a starter for 10. You kind of want to take that and then do other things. So there's just so many fun activities. So somebody might look and say, okay, there's Mary Seacole on here. What did she do? She was a nurse. Can we make some of our own kind of home remedies? And sometimes it can just be, you give the kid like a bowl and some water and some, you know, ingredient, and they just mix it up for half an hour or more. But for me, that's time you can spend talking and it's quality time and you're not just giving them a screen to like, you know, just kind of disengage sort of thing. So that's, that's the whole idea behind the maps is, you do something but it leads to other conversations and then you kind of share time together and again <laughs> people say stuff like you know i did it with my mum or my you know my children's grandparents and it's just you kind of because sometimes our parents maybe aren't the most talkative but if you can sit them down here's a map of ghana then they can start to share some of their stories or some of yeah. their background and then you kind of have that generational bonding and that's you know I don't know, for me, it becomes a bit of a tearjerker, to be honest. And it's like, yeah. you know, you, you, you kind of have that, you know, that, yeah, that, that quality time together. Um, and, and yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to achieve, basically. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I really enjoy doing it. I feel like it's not even just for kids. Like, adults could also have a puzzle. I love doing a puzzle, you know? Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and press the bell so that you will be notified every time that I upload. And there's also the Ghana playlist for videos on Ghana and there's the West African Wave playlist for videos just like this one. See you soon. Bye.